Thank you very much. For Tanzania, as you said, we have four stations, four stations installed already. But the main challenge we have in Tanzania is the data communication. We don't, that, we don't get data straight from the automatic weather stations to the national med services. We need to log into the server in Geneva for us to access data. So we think it's important that we can access data straight from the automatic weather stations so that we can analyze those data and make it useful for our people. And also another challenge we can mention in that one is the installation of those stations. Because we have existing plan in the country for expansion of our network. But now these automatic weather stations for the GHF project were installed over one region. And when we look at our plan, this region is a homogeneous zone. One station only might be a representative over that region so that the other three stations could be installed somewhere else to fill the gap of data in the country. One Thank of the you. things David said was there's a challenge of getting people to un literally understand the data, something which we in the developed world take for granted. What's your reading of, uh, of what kind of impact so far or not it has made and the complications and the challenges there? Yeah, I can say so far, we, as I said, we are not getting data straight, so we are not analyzing this data. Okay. So we cannot say much on the impact on the use of this data, unless at the time we are able to access the data straight on real time, so that we can analyze it and make use of it, then we can say much about that project. David, just look, can, can you pick up on that? What, that's a major challenge, but the speed at which a problem like that will be addressed. We're talking about a year of achievement, but clearly there's still a lot to be done. I think, I think in this, this year, the achievement has been one to demonstrate that one can one, build a system, it can be sustained, that's, that's accomplished. The next is then to integrate it fully into the national network and then it's also to work, uh, and, and this comment that I made earlier, that it's about really helping the national services build a more effective partnership with the users. This isn't about simply a producer supplying data. This is about a partnership between the provider and the user so that they can actually build something more effective for those who need the information, for the farming communities, uh, health sector, and so on. Because that's a, 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 an important phrase you used, a common public service platform developing from this. Jeremiah, your initial impressions uh, a year on with the 19 stations up. Jeremiah Ling Linguasa. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Our initial impressions are it's a good initiative, certainly an opportunity to innovate in the way in which data is acquired and disseminate it. And I think some of the challenges that have been posed already, I have in fact been met in other parts of the world already. So we have working examples of automatic weather station data being in fact transmitted through the same network on which they sit um, directly to a MET service and the MET service being able, in a sense those stations are calibrated and they work according to WMO standards. That's our task. Um, and then once that data is, 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 uh, is accessible, uh, the services and products that emerge from it, including to the telecommunications companies themselves, because one of the key clients for meteorological and hydrological data is the telecommunications industry, uh, in a sense to secure their own investment uh, in these towers and in other infrastructure. Uh, and so they become almost a key beneficiary immediately on the provision that certainly this data is accessible, it is used, there are products and services that come out of it. Um, and so we, we welcome the initiative. Uh, it's a private sector, uh, public sector, cooperative initiative, and it recognizes the importance of the National Meteorological Hydrological Services and the importance in provision of these services. And so um, we, we certainly welcome it, even though there are challenges that need uh, still Picking up on Agnes's remark, though, about the challenge of processing data at the moment, how do you see that developing? In my view, based on the case studies that we have, where it has been successful, it is uh, simply redirecting a line where the data flows directly to
to a telephone number in the Met Service, uh, and the Met Service uh, has then access to that in addition to the national platforms that it has. The second challenge, of course, of integration, it, it goes back to what uh, David was saying, is, is uh, initiating communication very early on because National Meteorological Hydrological Services already have uh, infrastructure development plans to upgrade and update uh, their technology. A lot of them, for example, are uh, analog stations, <clears throat> and uh, a lot of the MET services today are looking to uh, deploying automatic weather stations, which basically bring us firmly into the 21st century and a digital age. And so those plans cannot be ignored when we seek to deploy initiatives that in fact intend to support uh, the national infrastructure. So uh, those communications lines need to be opened very early on uh, and I think that's part of the sustainability challenge. Let me move on to the issues of partnership which uh, was emphasized by Kofi Annan at the beginning and by Micheline Kalmi Ray as well. This issue of broadening, deepening, investigating the chances and the possibilities for new partnership. Uh, let's go to uh, Sweden and Karl Henrik Svanberg, who's the president and CEO of Ericsson. Welcome. I hope we can hear you. Let me just hear that you're there, if I may. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Excellent. I hope we you can, can hear, hear me. We can hear you. Um, uh, what kind of stresses has this put on you as a telco, uh, a provider of mobile technology? Has this, is this something you've been easily able to embrace as a new partnership model? Well, let, let me first uh, just uh, thank my uh, dear friend Kofi Annan for inviting us into this project. And the idea a year ago was brilliant. I think the, the whole project is very well described this morning. And, and anybody can understand that uh, where Africa would need 5,000 or so weather stations has today 200, which means that data from what actually happens on the ground, which many of us take for granted since many, many, many years in our countries, is simply not there. And the idea of, of using cell towers is, is brilliant because of its simplicity. We are there, we're putting up one cell tower every hour, 24 by seven, and it's, it's not a big thing for us to put on the extra equipment that is needed. Of course, a bit more when we need to revisit an old existing base station and put it there. But from our point of view, that part is, is in the whole context of this project, not a difficult one. We know what to do and we can do it rather, rather rapidly. What about the economics of this? Ultimately, particularly in the current financial atmosphere, you have to make some very harsh decisions about where you're investing. Uh, what, is, what do you see as the numbers challenge or not for this model which is emerging in Africa? Well, if you, uh, we started our engagement in Africa in this way. We've been there for 100 years, but two years ago we, uh, we started to uh, deploy networks for the Millennium Villages. Uh, which uh, was a, a grand experience uh, and we have proven uh, to ourselves and the world that is, it is a business case for an operator to build a network even in the poorest of areas. That was a rather big decision. That was 12 million US dollars. This one is, is less money for us because we are already, the beauty of the project is we are already there. To put up a weather station means you need land, you need uh, tower infrastructure, you need electricity, you need the security, all is there. It's just about mounting the weather station on the, uh, on the structure that is there. So the money involved for us is, is not uh, uh, that huge. And just picking up on that point that David made a little earlier about some kind of more social community platform emerging from this. This is broader than just climate change on this particular issue of weather forecasting. But of course, when it comes to risk management and broader disaster prediction or stress prediction, where do you see this model developing over the next few years? 